Shy, the Shy Richard A. Bite Podcast, episode 77, the podcast MVP, you know what it is. We got producer here in the back, Q Lewis. We got a special guest uh, in the building. That's She's right. uh, Arthur, you know what I'm saying? She got the book, The Corporate Stripper, uh, the homie Yuri. It's a real book, y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah, 19 yeah. 19 chapters. Dope book, dope book. I read it. <laughs> I, I ain't read the whole thing, but I read, uh, I read some of it. And um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> so, uh, but before we get on... Um, anything as far as the book, yourself, we always start off with a salute me while I'm here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away to okay. give people their flowers, you know what I'm saying, instead of giving them while they can still smell them. Aww. So, but, but it can't be your know, immediate circle. It can't be parents, kids, or if you have a husband or boyfriend, it can't be none of that. It got to be somebody out of that immediate circle. Okay. So do you have anybody in mind? I mean, I'm going to go ahead and salute this podcast for having 77 oh, episodes because That's... that shit is hard to do. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and salute y'all then since, since oh. I got to salute somebody that's not in my inner circle. Yeah, hell yeah. Bet, bet. I appreciate that. <laughs> nobody ain't saluted me. Damn, well, sure. <laughs> I ain't a lot of people. Come on. And, yeah, nobody never said nothing to me. <laughs> but no, um, I ain't shout out everybody like like crazy. I run out of shout outs. You know, we on 77 episodes, so it's kind of hard to keep finding th- different people. Right. But... You know, um, I will give a shout out to uh, the family of Lex Fenoy. Uh He was on episode, I want to say 40. He uh, he passed away um, okay. last week, uh, car accident. He was on a motorcycle. He got uh, rear-ended and uh, passed away. Damn. So, uh, you know, I ain't trying to make a sad stuff, but I just want to make sure I uh, salute his family. Uh, praises to his kids, all his loved ones. And, uh, yeah, rest in peace, man. Rest Lex Fenoy. Now, um... I ain't gonna lie. Before I tap into uh, your growing up and stuff, when mm-hmm. you first messaged me about coming on the podcast, mm-hmm. I thought it was a fake page. I was wondering. I was like, "Damn, <laughs> he's not responding." Like I ain't. Like, yeah. What's going on? So, cause I, I looked on, on on the page of the book, and I'm like, and then I see your personal page, and I see the the gap between followers. Like, damn, is this mm-hmm. is she kind of like stealing? something from this girl page and put it on Ooh, this page the corporate stripper yeah okay 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 so, i can see that i, I hit, can see that i hit my producer up like hey this girl got this book she want to come on the show but i think it's a fake page <laughs> <laughs> like then i want to get set up and have her come and then it's like some, <laughs> some bullshit yeah, yeah. it's like coming to boy you know saying rob i know us. what you mean i know what you mean <laughs> so i'm glad that it was a real page it's a real page and i my assistant actually started that page for me uh last summer yeah. and um so i'm like this is actually this page is yeah. my book page is doing pretty good for it to only be um like active for a year mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it's a real page though yeah 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 because i'm like i'm like damn i don't know if this real but it's probably me or one of my girls or yeah. assistants uh dming you if yeah. it's not me directly for sure for sure and um another thing as i, I was shocked uh you said you got um kicked off of tiktok right most definitely i was shocked that like with the with the things that you know you post funny stuff but you know it show a little something something mm-hmm. and i'll be a you little know, jiggle yeah i'll be wondering like damn <laughs> you, you never got flagged on um on um, Instagram? Never. Instagram lets me... Instagram is like a uh, soft porn. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, <laughs> it never, ever... Like, the stuff I do is so minimal. Mm-hmm. But TikTok make it seem so extreme. Yeah. So, like, I'll have on, like, um, some boy shorts. Okay. My at like boy shorts on Instagram is your whole ass cheek is out. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah, the sure. boy shorts on TikTok is like your little bit of that ass cheek at yeah. the bottom is out. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. it's like... That little bit at the bottom is is so much to them yeah. when it's on a. I feel like when it's on a darker skin color person, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's so much. But when the you know fair skin or mm. whatever does it, it's just it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. I just walk past the camera and it jiggle a little too much, yeah. it's adult content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's messed up. Yeah, I got because YouTube be on it though. I'm surprised because they they got on me about sending. I found out you can't send too many messages within an hour. On YouTube? Yeah. No, on my bad. YouTube. Uh, Instagram. For sure. So, because what, yep. what I was doing was uh, every day I try to send my podcast to yep. different people. So, yes. I guess I sent it to... Marketing. Yeah, I sent it to too many people mm-hmm. and they flagged it and I had... It took me two weeks before I could send a message to anybody. Yep. They... This guy thought it was a spam account. They, so yeah, I get, I, I seriously, because I, so I do a lot of marketing and mm-hmm. that's like when you go on TikTok, I even be asking my nephews and, and little cousins, like y'all be seeing me on TikTok. They like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, okay, good. I mean, what I'm doing is working. Yeah. Like I figured out the algorithm to TikTok and how to like get yourself on the FYP pages. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I, I don't listen to shit. None of these platforms say yeah, for sure. I will DM or have my assistant DM. 200 people. Yeah. They will be in my account yeah. for 
Me like you said, long, yeah. like however long, but it's okay because long as I'm getting this shit out there yeah. and I'm getting the attention that I need to get and I'm selling and doing what I need to, mm -hmm. it, that's all that really matters. So, do you ever think that like social media gonna eventually make us pay? Because you we use Instagram a mm -hmm. lot for marketing ourselves, and you see that it's changed it now because some things you might not see. I might post something on Thursday, you might not see it till Saturday because exactly. it's not falling into, you know what I'm saying, yeah. the ag algorithm. Might not even see it till a week or two weeks yeah. later. Yeah, so do you think eventually we're going to have to wind up paying to advertise ourselves on there? I don't think so. Yeah. No, it's, it's just because so many people download, like, like so these platforms, they get paid for the downloads and, mm -hmm. and stuff. So, for so sure. many people download it because they want to be seen. Yeah. I don't think they're ever going to make us pay because they're making so much money off of it anyway. For sure. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Now, before we get into the book, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we, we ain't going to jump deep down right in the book. We always talk about growing up. You know what I'm saying? So, how was it for you growing up? I want to know where you're from, East, West, okay. if, it's, if it's Detroit. Mm -hmm. Um, who was in the household, uh, stuff like that. Like, how was it for a young Yuri? So young Yuri was, uh, it was harsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> definitely get I mean, to all that. <laughs> I come from a black family. Like, like my mother, she's from the South. My okay. dad, I mean, honestly, I don't know if he's from Michigan, mm -hmm. but I think he's from Detroit. Yeah. I want to say he is from Detroit. Okay. Um, but she's from the South. She's like this mixed girl from the South. My dad's mm -hmm. this black guy from, from Michigan, the North, I guess. That's how I like to look at it mm -hmm. because it makes the most sense to me of how their personalities yeah. are separately. And my mom is just like a, this rough like, she's not rough, but she is a bully. I look yeah. at her like oh, a bully, for sure. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And my dad is just, like, this really nice guy okay. um, that just... <sighs> Unfortunately, I, I think of it as a slave mentality. Anyways, mm. putting those characteristics to my childhood, mm. my mother beat my ass all the time. My mm. dad's never there. He moved on to someone else. So yeah. I was always a tomboy. Okay. Like, I'm always with my boy cousins from yeah. the east side of Detroit, Nevada and Conan. Mm. We stayed on Gallagher. If you guys go over there now, yeah. it is nothing fucking over there. There's yeah. no, not one house standing on that goddamn yeah. street. I know. It's, I used to co I, I coast over there. Okay. Yeah, it's, right down with Helen in Nevada. Yeah, it's, 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 it's no, 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 no houses on those streets for real. Yeah. I used to go to Corville um, okay. as little, little Yuri. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And then I moved to Evansville, Indiana when I was about eight. Yeah, with your yeah, grandma. Yeah. Grandma yeah. moved back to Detroit, mm. and then I started stealing my mom's truck yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that because yeah, sure. uh, I needed something to do. Yeah, yeah, we go with that. We tap into that. <laughs> I needed something to yeah. do, so that was my yeah. childhood. Between getting my ass beat, trying mm. to talk to boys, and stealing cars, yeah. that was my. Now childhood. outside of uh, you know saying that 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 damage, <laughs> was it ever like you you had like some good memories? Like before, like you, like was things ever like kind of like in the great in great shape for your family and stuff like that, like or for you? Do can you like just tap into like some positive things? I can say the only good time I can remember or the good thing that my family probably did was when my dad, my dad's side of the family lived on Gallagher. Like their mm -hmm. whole family mm -hmm. stayed either a block away or like on that street. Yeah. I thought that was like, you know, like a pretty cool thing for yeah, everybody, like, yeah. everybody to stick together. Our, their kids, like that's how I end up playing with all my boy cousins mm -hmm. all the time because they right across the street. Ain't nobody really to play with for besides sure. if your family there. Yeah. Um, so I think th those type of memories are something that is good for my childhood. Mm -hmm. And just like when my parents were married, like they got divorced so early. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I was three, like so I you don't, don't probably remember them being together now. I don't that. really yeah. remember them even being together. I just remember all the bad stuff. Like yeah, I remember sure. them arguing and fighting and me not being around and mm -hmm. just, you know, like I remember the, the, the shit that I should not remember, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? For sure, for sure. So, um, now we, we always talk about, because music always play a part in your life. For sure. Uh, every, everything is a soundtrack to our life for the most part. We could think of a song or whatever and take us back. But, yeah, we're going to do that. What's a song <laughs> or album that every time you hear, you just think back to your childhood? Bling, bling. Oh. Every time I come around bling. my city, bling, bling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that, that take you back to what you was getting money? What, what no, you... when I was like five, six years oh, old. Sh my Damn, childhood. I'm old. Yes. What year was you born? 91. Oh, shoot. Yeah, my wife was born in 91. Yeah. I was born in 86, so yeah, I'm a little older. Okay. Everybody come on show is, is younger than me, man. I'm an old head now. <laughs> yeah. Because when Bling Bling came out, because that's when that's my introduction to rap for real was uh, yeah. Cash Money. That was like, damn. I'm like, who is this? Because I was listening to like Childish Rap mm -hmm. before Lil Wayne, Juvenile, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Okay. So when you say Bling Bling, that was like my introduction to rap for real. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, who are some music people you were listening to just off 
your mom and dad, what they were playing maybe in the morning, Nothing. cleaning up. Nothing. Oh, my mom, <laughs> I swear to God, like, I, my dad never, like, my dad, once he got a new girlfriend, his wife, his, his current wife, she was his girlfriend at the time. Okay. Um, she used to uh, listen to Mary J. Blige all the time. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. a good memory from, like, just being around him. Mm -hmm. And then, like, my mom it was like, the, oh, gosh. <laughs> My mom, um, <laughs> she would listen to church music all the time. So okay. I know all the like popular mm -hmm. church artists, artists like uh, Kirk Franklin, yeah, yeah, Marvin yeah. Gaye, sure. Anita Baker. And, yeah, yeah, uh, classic. Yeah. Yeah, Anita Baker, classic, classic. My right. mom making pancakes. You already know it's about to be a good morning. You hear that Anita Baker. Right. You about to have a good, great ass yes. morning, for yes, real. Yes, for real. So, you know, of course you say, you know, you went through a lot of stuff, whatever, uh, growing up. You mm -hmm. did a lot of things. Uh, but... Did you ever have like dreams as a as a youngin that you wanted to pursue that you might have never did like at six seven you wanted to be a doctor or something like that like mm -hmm. you ever had something that you wanted to be as a youngin youngin but you never really pursued it like do you remember them dreams? Yes, for sure. I always wanted to um, be a cheerleader and run track. Okay. I always wanted to do that. Yeah. And never got to do it just because my household like yeah. I didn't have that type of household to where mm. I could go to track or yeah. probably even afford it. You yeah. know so. I just ended up doing bad shit. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just activities that I shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think um, if the household was a little better? Of course, you know, saying if you change one thing in your life, it, it changes everything. For sure. Do you ever be thinking about like, dang, if it was like this, mm -hmm. I'd be like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever think about this type type of stuff? Always. If I was white, yeah. both my parents would probably have been in the home, yeah, for and sure. I would not have been 13 talking to men that were 23 years old. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. That's how I feel for sure. Yeah. They would have protected my little self in yeah. my home and made sure I didn't go out there and do those things because sure. it's just I really believe that mm. uh, racism is real in this country oh yeah that's a fact that's a fact now uh, you salute me I want to congrats send you a congrats because uh, June 19th is when you put out the book last year yeah it's been a year so congratulations on that thank you now before putting it out would you ever worry about the backlash or how people may see you or whatever just because of the stuff that you put in the book no, because I've been, I feel like once I felt like my family, like my mom and my dad and my brothers didn't really want nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. It was like, I, how much worse can it get? Yeah, for sure. Like if the people that I want to love me yeah. and care about me don't give a fuck about me, mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about what anybody, anybody has to say or think about me. Oh so, yeah, that's a fact. No, that's a fact That's for just real. what it is. Yeah, especially you say you, you wanted that love mm -hmm. and that stuff like that, so... If you seeing that ain't going on, shit, I don't give a damn what Derek exactly. saying. You know exactly, exactly. I don't care. Yeah. So that's just where I stand on it, and I'm gonna probably stand on that forever yeah. because to this day, me and my family don't talk. So. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Cause me growing up, like everybody wanted a better childhood, but my childhood wasn't that bad. It was just you know, mom and dad arguing all the time, and then yeah. you be like, damn, I can't wait for my mom to leave this dude. Talk to You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were just talking about my dad had a brother, um, a brother, a son outside my mom. So my whole thing, I was worried about my mom and dad breaking up just thinking that my brother won't be my brother no more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> funny as hell. Yeah. yeah. No, the, I really believe, like, so have y'all heard of the Willie Lynch art articles? Put me up. Put me up. So the Willie Lynch article, just, um, he was basically, like, you, um, a motivational speaker to slave owners back in, like, the 1700s. Okay. Um, maybe before then, because uh, he was, like, slavery. He taught slave owners how to train a nigger like yeah. you train a nigger like you train a horse Damn. um you yeah. take the you take the nigger male out the household and uh -huh. you make the woman the the nigger woman feel alone at a lesson she raised the kid she take the anger out on the kid train exactly. him to be the next upcoming slave and so on and so on and that and you and he says slavery is supposed to last for the next thousand years yeah. if you think about today's time and you think about how black societies are all over the world mm -hmm. All black still, fathers are not in the home, yeah. not consciously thinking like, why are we not there? But yeah. in reality, it's like white families yeah. are in their homes yeah, and yeah, legacy yeah. matters and yeah. they have generational wealth. Black families don't have generational wealth and black men don't even be in the household. Just off the strength of that Willie Lynch article, yeah. I think about that because they tell you it's like a, it's a, it's a psychology thing. Mm. And it's like every family yeah. in america is suffering from every family suffering white or black yeah, from something but sure. mainly the black men are not really yeah. you know what and i'm then saying it can't become a parent because yeah. if you're a boy and you're seeing like your mom not getting the love that she deserved from a man mm -hmm. you kind of like 
take those same those same uh, ways yeah. to when you grew up and get a family. Yeah, that's so, you just a repeat. Yeah, because yeah. like we was having this uh damn, how you feel about like all right, we was having this argument as far as like um me and a uh, young lady and stuff. I ain't gonna put her name out there because we always talk about her and shit. But we just talking about like fathers and mothers and and how like you know what I'm saying how to be how they should be raised and and how a woman and a, and a man deal with kids differently. And we was arguing because she was saying like you were saying how a boy may not see the love that his dad showing from it to his mom, so he would carry that stuff over. And we was talking about like um, she was saying how like men are emotional. As far as like with their kids and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. they don't show the emotional side with they with their sons and stuff like that. Like it's always if a kid falls on the ground, get your ass up. It's never no hugging, so you never get that that love from your dad. Then if you don't get it from your mom, you carrying that shit over to when you get older too. Mm -hmm. So I I need be because like of course we grew up in a way that your dad show you tough love and your mom show you that feminine love and mm -hmm. that hugging and that, that 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 type of shit. Do you feel like that shit need to change because that's a slavery mindset too? As far yeah. as like a a man thinking that I gotta be tough on my son so my son be tough. Yep, I totally agree with you when you just said it's a slave mentality thing because it really is. Mm -hmm. Like, why why is it okay for a white man to kiss his son in the mouth and hug him and be like, "Son, go do this and go do, like show mm -hmm. feminine things," but he's not. He's he's not in the street trying to kill people. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. if a black man do that and be kiss his son and hug him and be like, mm. son, it's okay. Like, you know, you if you fall, you hurt yourself, it's okay, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah. it's like it's like, oh, he teaching him how to be a sissy. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not the case. Like yeah. every kid needs love. Oh, yeah, like for they sure. really yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every kid really needs love. And I honestly feel like um it's a psychology thing like mm -hmm. if you don't give that individual um love and attention when they're growing up mm -hmm. we're like they're gonna seek for it somewhere oh, else yeah. that's yeah. what i did yeah. like when my parents didn't give it to me i just looked for it somewhere else and i yeah. got it in the wrong places uh -huh. yeah and that's why i say like with me having kids now uh, I got two boys. Just had a fresh baby girl, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared for it. You know, because I got Aww. a daughter. I got, I got to be ready to go ahead and beat some boys up. But, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of times we don't see that love in the household, and um, that's one thing. With my son, I don't, I don't kiss my son. I just don't, you know, I just yeah. never did. But I, I'll give my son, I give him a hug. I yeah, tell my love him and stuff that. like that. It's nothing wrong with that because that's not gonna transfer over. And then if your dad ain't showing you love, if your mom ain't showing you love, you just don't know how to love. You don't so know how a, you and you don't know how and you either either you've looked for it or you don't know how one mm -hmm. of the two and then you one of them mm -hmm. un, unemotional individuals yeah, not yeah, want yeah. to talk to nobody not want to go nowhere for sure yeah yeah and then and then like with households that's broken you can still love your kids together and still raise them up but a lot of times um you can disagree with me but <laughs> a lot of women sometimes we had this argument that a lot of women once you break up with the woman she refuses to let the father be a father because of their issues with the father you know what I'm saying it's a lot of times and not in my situation because me and my oldest son mom we not together but she still allowed me to be a father and and do what i gotta do but a lot of kids are, i mean kids a lot of women are used to the kids as a token like hey if you ain't do me right so you can't see your kids you ain't do this right so you can't see your kids when you gotta say fuck the relationship we got this kid together and we gotta raise him him or her to be the best person they can be I agree with you that a lot of women are not healed when they're breaking up with their um, baby daddies or mm -hmm. um, ex-husbands and whatever. So, no, they don't want the kid to see the dad. Mm -hmm. I even was one of those women where I felt like I wasn't healed. Mm -hmm. But in today's time, like now that I understand legacy and I'm more woke and I understand why I even have my kids and why they're even here. Mm -hmm. Like I'm never, I would never cut their father off. I would like if I, if me and him don't stop talking today and get a divorce and we're no longer together, mm. I'm going to allow him to see his children yeah. because he needs to be a part of their life. My son need his father, my daughter need her dad, mm -hmm. and I need a goddamn break. We're gonna get along. Like we're gonna work it out. We're gonna get along. And a lot of women don't feel like that. A lot of women are not secure within their self and a lot of women are not over the relationship That's a fact. i feel like if you're secure within yourself and it's a mutual understanding when y'all broken up and it's not some oh you cheated on me and fuck you nigga or mm -hmm. bitch you fuck <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, that's yeah. how it usually be if it's not like that then i think if y'all mature mm -hmm. it can it can work out yeah. it really can but i do agree a lot of women be bitter yeah. and a lot of dudes be bitter i'm about to, I'm about to say a lot of dudes be bitter like oh fuck you you know what yeah. i'm saying sometimes like that's the one thing with me and my oldest son mom we was in high school and we got together and it just the fact that we can agree like this and this was we 
we was young. We don't see eye eye like we used to. Mm -hmm. Things is is different for us. We gonna break up, but you still his mom. I'm still his dad. Yeah. And whenever events come, whenever we got made decisions, it's still our decision together for him. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but Co-parenting. That is really co what co-parenting is. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, my wife now, her her, her, some, her friend's like, hold on. You ain't never had an issue with um, Rashad's son, mom? I'm like, no. Like, everything's good. Like, and that's how it should be. Yeah, they talk and stuff. On, you know, they can talk and stuff without me. And, like, it's all good. It's all love. That's how it should be. Yeah. Now, with the book, <laughs> you know, you got an album. It's kind of easy to push an album because we listening and stuff like that. How hard is it to push a book knowing that niggas don't read like okay, this? Okay, it's so <laughs> like, A lot hard. of niggas don't want to read. Like, you know it's what I'm saying? It's so hard, guys. It really is. Kids read, too. Yes, yeah. like, I have to really be in the DMs, mm -hmm. and I really have to, like, do a lot of this. A lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Like, I feel like I sell a lot of hard copies and sell a lot of books when I do come out, mm -hmm. and I do um, podcasts and things like that. So, if you guys are trying to promote yourself or promote any book that you're doing, you probably sh need to understand how much leg work got to be oh, into sure. yeah. it like it's like back in the day where where people used to take their cassettes or cds yeah. in their trunk and they yeah. trying to go how like that's you got to have your books yeah. in your car and your trunk like Ready. trying to sell them because that's how hard it is like yeah. it, it really is it's not easy um that's why i do so much social media marketing and mm. i got that part figured out because once i got your attention mm. It, you know, it's just like it goes from there. For sure. Um, so I would say it's it's pretty hard. <laughs> what, what what's what's better for you uh, as far as sales is the hard copies or uh, or the, um uh, what's the copies you ebooks. Uh, e so e -books, I e -books, do. I'm sorry. I do ebooks, and you just said because niggas don't read. I started. I did an audio book. <laughs> 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 I did an audio book because of that. So the audio book is the raw unedited version. Like this version is this lady from um, Trinidad, and I'm gonna say this until yeah, I just, you saying it, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she definitely um <laughs> got some stuff a little off in here but it's okay but the raw version of the book where it's unedited yeah. and it's just my words from my th brain is um the audio book yeah. um and that is the book for people that just okay. is like let me just play something let me just hear this yeah. shit because i ain't yeah. about to pick this <laughs> book up and read yeah. it it's my two chapters yeah then a lot of times we get work <laughs> You know, depending on what type of job you got, it's easier to hear something. And, you yes. know what I'm saying? Because you got that yes. eight hours if you're working at, like, Chrysler or something like that. And yes. you need to fill some time up. I know I listen, I listen to a I listen to more podcasts than I than I watch them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just because I, I'm on the go, I'm moving yes. around, so I'd rather okay. hear it than, you know what I'm saying, to actually sit down and watch it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But uh, talking about, oh, yeah, because matter of fact, I seen what you said as far as the uh, press from Trinidad. You said on the show yesterday yes. that instead of saying Nevada and Coney, it's like Nevada and a Coney. I ate a Coney. Yeah, I ate you a know, Coney. Yeah. I, live on, I live on I ate a Coney. Like, yeah. It would be something weird like that in there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, for sure. And it is my first book, guys. So yeah. I'd have, I have had mixed reviews. I've had reviews like this book is super, really, really good. Like I, mm. like the reviews I've got, like I've read it in eight chapters in one night. And yeah. like they would DM me that. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been through this too. Like mm. just like some real connection type of shit. Yeah. And I love that's so cute DMing, DMing yeah. me y'all I love that type of stuff it really does like make me cry sometimes I'm like yeah. on front um, but the other reviews have been like this is poorly written yeah, 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 like sure. this is first grade level writing uh, yeah. first of all I have a GED motherfucker <laughs> so don't forget that and I went to college and I do have a bachelor's degree but still that yeah. first education yeah. of, of education was a GED so sure. don't come at me like that yeah, yeah, yeah. do it do it ever like um when you get like uh, uh, reviews like that, do I ever kind of like mess up your confidence as far as like continuing on and pushing or going to another book? Like, or do you look at it like I don't give a fuck? I'm still gonna do what I gotta do. Yeah, I just look at it like I don't give a fuck. Don't yeah. stop. Don't quit. Don't fuck. Hell no. Cause <laughs> I said with the podcast, like I remember one time somebody said something. I was mad as hell. Like what? It is frustrating though. <laughs> it does kind of like if you up here and then like you already kind of having a mediocre day and you see something like that, mm -hmm. it do kind of take your energy. Like oh my god, like. Yeah. Why you just got it? For you sure. lose. I'm just saying. Yeah, like, but you do be feeling yeah. like that, though. You really do. Like, damn, why you got to try to fuck up my day? Like, yeah, for sure. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Now, uh, to get back in the book, you was talking about, like, what you was going through, neglect and stuff like that. Yeah. At what age did you realize, like, the way I'm being treated, like, this ain't right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be going through this. Um, I have to say 11. Uh -huh. When I was 11, I realized, like, okay, I just feel like I don't. I feel like my ass whoopings are more than the average person yeah. that I'm in school with. That's mm -hmm. just how I feel. I'm just like, it just seems like 
I just get my ass with too much. And yeah. I was like, my mother would fight me. Like, she's like, oh, I'm going to fight you like a bitch on the street. Like, mm. she would say that to me. Yeah. And I'm not about to hit my mother. Like, mm. that's my mom. I don't care how much she hit me. I don't care what she doing. I'm just yeah. not going to do it. Like, yeah. she brought me here. Whatever. Like, this yeah. is just what it is. Mm. So, 11 is when I realized it. And then about 12 is when I started leaving. Okay. So, like, 12, I started skipping school. Like, mm. my mom was like, I can't take her no more. Called my dad and his girlfriend. Yeah. Sent me to Southfield. Yeah. I was in Southfield. Went to that middle school, Thompson Middle School. And um, I never went to class. I skipped yeah, class sure. every goddamn yeah. day. Yeah. I was walking down last year every goddamn day. Yeah. I swear. Yeah. And so, I would just go back to school on time to catch the bus yeah, back to my back, dad's yeah, place. Sense, you went to school. Right. Yeah. And so, I flunked uh 12 i mean whatever that grade was seventh grade but they mm. still passed me because i did just enough like, i got passed my exams and then i just kept leaving like once mm. i went to eighth grade i i just left like yeah. i just completely left and i didn't i came back probably when i was like um when it was time to go to school again mm. they put me in juvenile started putting me in group homes mm. and then once they started putting me in group homes and mm. i saw that it was not as strict as juvenile yeah. i was like oh this is a way for me to leave yeah. oh for sure yeah, like, yeah. I get can, away from the, yeah, yeah, i can yeah, really yeah. leave board, now yeah. so now let me ask you this because uh, you know fast forward you say you was getting you know beat by by your mom and stuff like that mm -hmm. and, and stuff you being a parent now what was your definition of discipline for your kids? You got you said you got a daughter and a son. Yeah. How do you discipline your kids? Like because you know, do you is there every time you may spank them or is it all words? Like how do you discipline your kids knowing where you came from and how you didn't like being treated from your mom? So I barely with my kids. Like mm -hmm. I would say out of my son's lifetime, I he's eleven. Mm -hmm. I spanked him maybe five times yeah like yeah. i'm not even bullshitting mm -hmm. um and my daughter and it's because my son is a really really good kid like mm -hmm. he i do believe that you should spank your kids but mm -hmm. i don't think and i think that should stop at a certain age i yeah. think uh, you should stop spanking your kids maybe like nine ten For like sure. ten is like okay it's enough yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. is what's the point they're yeah. big, especially boys like they big. Like, my son is <laughs> yeah. already bigger than me. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, yeah. And he's 11. So, like, it's like, okay, he like my, come on now. Like, mm -hmm. this ain't about to do nothing. Yeah, yeah, come on, right? You whooping me, <laughs> right. now you looking crazy. He's looking at me like, girl, yeah. girl. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm bigger than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think I, you just got to be a, a parent, like a real parent and love your kid and, like, know when to dismiss. So, I try to, I use my words. I take things away mm -hmm. instead of hands. Like, yeah. I'm not about to, unless I'm, unless he, like, like square up okay nigga oh, what's yeah. up yeah. like oh, oh, oh this is what you want but <laughs> okay what's up yeah. but other than that no i i try to give them as much love as possible because mm. i knew that's what i was lacking yeah, i knew the sure. attention and the love is where my parents fucked up at yeah. so as a parent i just be looking at them like damn i had oh y'all yeah. get on my nerves yeah and like i said sometimes <laughs> It depends on what the kids do. They, they they might deserve a hand or two. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Sometimes. But yeah, sometimes. My daughter time, get her yeah. ass <laughs> I ain't gonna front. But a lot of times, like, you know what I'm saying? You could talk to a kid and break them down. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's how my son is. Yeah. Words is like, he like, like, yeah. oh my God. I can't believe you piercing. said that. Yes. Yeah, my yeah. daughter, she gets her ass spanked. Yeah. Yes. And then sometimes, like I said, you got to take stuff away. That that mm -hmm. hurt because you just in the room with nothing. You like damn. That like, does hurt. You know what I'm saying? It really does hurt. Definitely. Yeah, for sure it do. For sure. <laughs> and then, but then a lot of times, like you know, what I'm saying when you getting um getting beat and stuff like that, it just a lot of times when you get those ass whoopings, it's because your parents aren't happy with the way things are going in their life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Work might kick their ass, and they can't take it out on their boss or whatever, so they come yeah. back home and do it to you. Exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Yeah. That was the case of my ass whoops. I feel yeah. like a lot of times yeah. it was work was so much for her, and she was a single parent mm. that was traumatized from her childhood. Yeah. It just mm, yeah, it carried on. Yeah. Yeah. Now with you, you know, being young. And, um, you know what I'm saying, getting beat down. I ain't going to say beat down, but Basically. <laughs> you're getting beat by your moms and stuff. Did um you ever thought think about, like, death or suicide? Because you'd be like, damn, I don't get my ass beat so much. I don't want to be around no more. Because mm -hmm. you're young. You're young as hell. So did that ever cross your mind? It definitely crossed my mind when I was a kid, for mm -hmm. sure. But... I could never do it. Like, yeah. I never was. Like, that's one thing about me. Like, I never could self-inflict harm to myself. Yeah. Never. Sure, like, yeah. even though I thought about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a fucking, ooh. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like, I couldn't do it because it's like, it was, I don't know why. Yeah. Even to this day, like, mm. as an adult, I still can't, I don't mm. even think like that, but I still couldn't 
self and I can't harm myself. Yeah. It's just a mental thing. But I know a lot of people that have yeah. and that has harmed their self. Yeah, and it's sure. just like, damn, like I can't and, and I but people that do do that, I see that they're lacking some they they have a strength in doing something like a high tolerance for t uh, pain and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then like I will have like a high tolerance for chasing something yeah, like sure. focus like trying to get to something yeah, so it's, yeah. it's just like where you it's lack more, yeah. where you lack something you yeah so oh yeah for sure it, yeah. it has as now, a kid i read with your with your mom being the oldest mm -hmm. of 12 siblings do you um a it, it would seem like she had like that motherly instinct because she'd been raising her brothers and sisters. But do you think like it went totally opposite because mm -hmm. she was probably frustrated with having to be a uh, quote unquote mother figure to her brothers and sisters, taking care of her brothers and sisters. And then when she had her actual kid she, and, and she like, hold on, all the frustrations may have been taken out on you throughout her life growing up, having to be a mother when she wasn't ready to be a mom. I you just, ever, you ever think like that, t like her, being frustrated with taking care of her brother's sisters may have, like, translated to you and, like, all right, my actual kid getting on my damn nerve, I can whoop her ass. I, I do believe it's just, like, um, I think that it's just the way she, it's just systematic racism. That's just mm -hmm. how I feel. Like, mm -hmm. she grew up where her mother worked four jobs, so she did take care of her, her siblings, and mm -hmm. she was more of their friends. Like, she was their big sister. She wasn't like a mother to them. Like yeah. She was like a friend, like, oh, we about to fight yeah, if yeah. we don't like each other yeah. or we're about to go sneak and do this. Like she was more of their friend. So I think she never had a mom. Yeah. My grandma was always gone uh -huh. and she, whatever, she, cause she was a kid raising yeah. kids. So yeah. she just like did whatever her kid self did. And I think that just, went off into her adulthood mm -hmm. because she also had trauma with her her last husband my brother's um father like okay. she had trauma with him mm -hmm. um that was physical abuse and then she had physical abuse growing up from mm -hmm. when her mom was around so i just think she just never had the right guidance and she never knew where to find the knowledge because she never read yeah so sure. yeah, yeah. it just was like yeah. a, a constant uh, repeat of yeah not reading not knowing what to do and not having the right guidance so she she never she never had the guidance and i think the difference is i just i took it upon myself to be like i don't want to be like that yeah that's yeah. some bullshit. oh yeah 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 <laughs> for sure now you know 11 12 that's when you you know saying you got your first kiss you mm -hmm. uh you still you still still in mom's car right <laughs> you feel like you was doing this to get back at her and you feel like if you have better upbringing do you think like some of these uh early actions with boys would have happened Oh, if my mom would have just asked me what was going on or took me somewhere or put me in chair, like gave me something to do. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I was the type of kid, like I am like a natural athlete. Like I train myself for a marathon. Mm -hmm. I train my, like I work out, like I do things, like I have so much energy. So I got to put it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's been like this since I was a child. So if, when I told my mom I wanted to do cheer and I told her I wanted to run track and I told her I wanted to do these physical things mm -hmm. to just like give me something positive to do. Yeah. I think she should have just listened and, mm -hmm. and like really did it like yeah. really did it verse and talk to me when I when shit didn't go right mm -hmm. like so when she like I'm gonna put you in bowling and I'm like the hell is <laughs> for sure, yeah. this yeah. is nothing like track <laughs> what the hell is this yeah, for real. <laughs> like so forcing me to do stuff like that and then leaving going to work and then when I don't wash the dishes beat my ass it's yeah. like okay yeah. you ain't never here yeah, enough then is enough. when you yeah, is yeah. here you forcing me to go do this bowling bullshit yeah. <laughs> like I'll get you over a little bit shit right like yeah. it just was a I, I just believe like uh, yeah it could have it yes if she just would have said gabby like was what's wrong yeah for sure it's like what you what you what do you need like yeah. i love you like what are why are you doing this yeah that's that's doing let's get better together yes yeah. if she would have just did that that would have changed a lot oh yeah for sure it would have yeah hey yeah, parents make sure y'all talk to them damn kids talk to your kids <laughs> y'all that's important yeah now fast forward this is the one part i'm looking like what the hell <laughs> so you know saying fast forward you um I want to say you was 13, whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you run away, and you had to, you you go to this hotel, right? Yes. And then that's when you uh, encounter this situation with this older gentleman. He was 22. Yeah. Yep. Now, first, wh what um, what made you uh lie about the age and stuff? No, whatever. What made you? And then two, did you do you look back now like damn, like that was some crazy shit, like you know, cause my man could have got mad when he found out how old you was and 
<laughs> and, and you know he could hurt you. He could have hurt me. Yeah, yeah because he you know he could got in trouble. For, of course, mm-hmm. you know he could have. He would have got in trouble. He would have gotten in trouble. Yeah, do you? So sure. it's like, what made you like? You ran away. You see this dude. You know he older, but you still like. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to him. I, I, is it because you, the lack of love you was receiving, or you like, hold on, I want to try this because I've been thinking about sex and, you know, what I'm saying my man's so like, like he the one. Like no, 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> so how that situation went? Then that's what I'm saying. I don't know how. It, I need to let me. I need to read the edited version of this book. I'm sorry, like yeah. I haven't read it. I, other people no, has, good. but so okay. The way that situation went where I was 13 and I was in a hotel, that's when I lost my virginity. And I never talked to any guy. Every time I'm sitting somewhere, a guy has always came up to me and talked to me. So that guy, actually, he did come up to me and started talking to me, making conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, he's making conversation. And I know I don't have nowhere to sleep tonight. For sure. So I'm just going to talk to him and see where it goes. And that's kind of, that's literally how it went. Mm -hmm. Like, we were at the pool and like he was like well you can come back up to my hotel i lied about my age yeah. so yeah you know it just like obviously he was looking for a girlfriend or someone to have sex with yeah yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> obviously and i didn't know what the hell was about to happen yeah, or what yeah, was going yeah. on i'm just like i'm just i didn't know i was going to have sex with that man but yeah. i knew that I mean, I was 13. I didn't know yeah. what. I'm like, you go back to a room with a guy. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you're yeah. going to have sex. But if you do, like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I need to do it anyways at some point. Like, that's how I felt. For like, sure. I need to do it. It's a part of life. Now, he was 22. How old did you tell him you, you were? I told him I was. Oh, so long ago. I think I told him I was either 16 or 18. Okay, okay, okay. One of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I either said 16 or 18. Yeah, because the things you were doing at that age, I was only dreaming. Like, damn, I can't mm-hmm. wait till this happens. <laughs> like, uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, I can't wait for this to happen. So, you know, I guess he had figured it out because I guess somebody had um, called and said, you know what I'm saying, it was a missing uh, report yeah, about you and that stuff. that looked like me. A yeah. girl that looked like me, fit my description. Um, and he was like, you're missing. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I am, I guess, because I'm not going home. Yeah, but but even though he found out you was young, he was still Yeah, like once he found out, he was like, like he was mad about it for like maybe like six hours and like didn't talk to me or nothing. And then he finally came back around and was like, well, we already did it at this point. Yeah, damn. Yeah, and now, I was just like, okay. Now, how developed could you be to pass for 18? Like, for people to be like... I don't think... I, <laughs> like, I definitely you know didn't look like this, yeah. for sure. I definitely didn't look like this. Yeah. Um, but I definitely had a... I always had a tiny waist and a big butt. Like, yeah, yeah. I've always had a tiny waist and a big butt. So, even at 13, I had, a, like, a small waist and like mm-hmm. a little shapely yeah. like people always said i look like a gymnast or mm. a gymnast yeah. literally that's what they would say i look like a gymnast so mm. i guess like i had a little shape to myself but my face always looks super young yeah, yeah, yeah. always so, and then once you have a conversation you got it was a little details that's gonna let me know that's what i'm saying so i honestly just think that i just run into a lot of pedophiles that's yeah. it now what now how do that make you feel like looking back at, at these guys now and you have a daughter like what, I was how, hurt. How, how how insane this guy gotta be to know that you this age but still like that's still fuck around you know what I'm saying like that's 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 some that's some wild shit right there it's very like when you a grown up and you got kids it's like yeah damn like it, <laughs> it hurts yeah. like it's like damn because that basically means that you're real like I had to realize that I basically was molested yeah basically it's a lot of and the crazy thing about it, it's and a I lot didn't of dudes know like that. yeah I didn't know like that, that that's considered molestation when Mm -hmm. you're 13 having sex with someone that's 22 and then when you think about it like that it's like fuck yeah like damn like it hurts like it's like why would you put yourself in that situation yeah for sure as an adult thinking about it but as a kid trying to get away from another situation uh unhealthy household it's like yeah I, like, and that's what I'm saying. That part that that shouldn't have never happened. That would have never happened to Becky or Sarah. Oh yeah, yeah, never. for sure. Yeah. That would have never happened. Yeah, because I'm saying like, because I coach, I coach boys down, coach girls. Mm-hmm. So when I have girls, like you know, it's a way you gotta dress when you come to practice. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because this one girl, uh, uh, I had a girl on the team. She came to practice with these super tight shorts on. I'm like, listen, come on now, mm-hmm. you 13. I'm this grown man in here. Mm-hmm. Why do you have your shorts on? Go change or are you going or home? Or double up on your shorts. Yeah. Because my thing is if her dad were to walk in, see her dressed like that, and I'm the coach, 
if I'm him, I'm coming right to me. Like, why do you have my daughter out here dressed like that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What is the uniform? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's the first question. Like, what the hell is the yeah. uniform here? So I'm like, if you don't have, if you don't have a bigger, <laughs> bigger size shorts or something different, hey, you gotta sit practice out. You ain't practicing today, like. Okay. This ain't your day. <laughs> but you got a lot of dudes. You see these stories of a lot of dudes who coach females who wind up getting into these text message relationships and then they wind up getting physical. And I always think like, dog, it got you gotta be a sick individual. To want to sit here and pursue a young girl, mm -hmm. and you a grown ass man. Yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying you can have any woman. It depends on how you look, but yeah. you can have any woman for real, and you sit here pursuing this little girl who don't really know better. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, and that's the and that is the fucked up part. It's the fact that it's a child, mm -hmm. and they have the lack of knowledge of relationship and intimacy, mm -hmm. and you have all the knowledge of relationships and intimacy, yeah. so you taking. Full advantage. Yeah, for sure. It's complete manipulation. Yeah, hell yeah. It's so fucked up. So it. So when you think about it like that as an adult, it's like that. And that's why I got mad at my parents, and yeah, we don't talk for sure. to this day. In my family, we don't talk because it's like, how are you? They're like, you need to take the blame for what you did. Yeah. I was fucking yeah, like you young. thirteen. Yeah. I was a teenager. I didn't fucking know what I was doing. Yeah. I needed someone to say, sit your motherfucking ass down yeah, sure. and shut up and yeah. listen and yeah. like just something. Somebody yeah. needs to just grab me and talk to me. So I'm. It just. It really matters when you have kids. Mm -hmm. My kids will never go through what I went through. Nah. I tell my son all the time, like, you wouldn't, boy, yeah. I will chain your ass to that motherfucking <laughs> yeah. pole in the face. Yeah. If you Hell don't yeah. get out of my face, with, Hell get yeah. over it. And then by me having a daughter now, like, I know, like, sometimes you got to keep it real with your daughter, like how you would with your, with your, with your son. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Let them know about, you know what I'm saying, goods and keep it good. And, oh, no. You know, I teach my daughter. I t she knows this is called a vulva. Yeah. I teach her. I teach her about her body. She knows. Like, I always tell my husband, like, you ain't got to worry nothing about her. She's going to know. For sure. Because that is where... I feel like parents lack, like they hide stuff from black families, hide stuff from their kids. Yeah. White families, they tell their kids everything. Yeah, I heard my everything. somebody, the owner that I'm leasing my office out of for my um my companies. He's like my my son um owns 120 acres yeah. in Glendale, Michigan, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. okay. He's yeah. like, and he talks to me about Biden. He comes home and talks to me about Biden. Yeah. His nine year old son. Yeah, for sure. This yeah. is things that black people will. They don't even. I don't even know yeah. if. My mother knows where what one hundred and twenty thousand acres is, <laughs> yeah. or how much it costs, or yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like and a lot of times, and then a lot of times, parents don't even feel like talk to their kids. Get the hell out of my face! I'm sitting here doing this. Fuck on, get mm -hmm. on. You know what I'm saying? Go your you room. gotta educate your kids. Yeah, you on can't, everything. You can't always send your kids to the room because that's when they pick up their phone. Now their phone is everything. Yeah, you gotta watch what they what they watching, what they playing, what oh, they yes. doing, who they talking to. Especially when they ten, eleven. Yeah, they be, they be knowing stuff. Yeah, because like when my son, I started checking his phone. Like all the time, like I don't do it now, but I used to. And then I tell him, like, listen, make sure you're not sending no pictures out to these little girls, because mm -hmm. guess what? The screenshot is a, is a powerful button. Oh yeah. <laughs> and oh, I'm like, yes. and don't make make That's sure. That's some good advice yeah. to give them. And make sure girls aren't sending nothing to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, a father gonna look through. I know I'll be looking through my daughter's phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She see you sending this twerk video to his mm -hmm. boy. Shit, That's he ready to kill you and me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then if we sharing the same phone phone line. And, and and she said that to you. That can go back to me, and I'm getting child pornography. You That's never know. That's not cool. Yep, I know. You got some valid points, sir. Yeah, you got some valid points. So you just gotta make sure you keep it real with your kids. Let them know what's going on because you don't want that junk to mess them up in the long run. Yes. I now, like, I ain't trying to give too much of a book away. And stuff, okay, but I was okay. Just, like with Kay, the girl. Yes. I, how did y'all like that? That when I was reading that book, I didn't understand the. the um, it put me on the transition as far as like you meeting her like was that a friend already yeah that was somebody so she <laughs> another influence of the uh, slave mentality in black yeah. community she um actually was like 16 in the eighth grade <laughs> yeah. she didn't give a damn okay <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that was like, fuck it, I'm here. Okay, so that's how we met in yeah. middle school. We oh, met shit. in middle school. We was in the same middle school. Yeah. Oh, man. And you probably look at her like, you sissy, you dope. Right. <laughs> she was doing all the... No, no. What happened was the first time I left when I was like 12, the first time I left, I don't know how I had her phone number. I had her phone number. Yeah. Called her. was like, I need a place to stay. She let me crash at her place. Uh -huh. And because she's 16... Yeah. 
no one's paying attention to what she's yeah, doing. Sure. Yep, she yep. can do whatever she want to do. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So it was very easy to get around with her because she was 16. Yeah. So I was able to get around and do stuff a lot easier. Yeah, get yep. food, have a place to stay. Yeah. Like things have like a, that. Yeah, all doing a little touchy touchy. You know? Of course. <laughs> and, well, that's how we started off in school. But once mm -hmm. I stayed at her place yeah, and found yeah, out she dance. liked girls, yeah. of course. Like, yeah. I, well, I didn't know that she didn't want to put me up on what bisexual was or mm -hmm. girls liking girls and girls yeah. liking guys like i didn't understand what that yeah. shit was for a very long time because yeah, then in the book you, you were saying like how like when y'all in public y'all sisters but right. then at the crib she like it was very yeah. confusing because and that's why i was so confused about it because i'm like i don't know what this is like yeah we have sex yeah. and when we are in yeah, we, we but, <laughs> right so why are you saying my sister was so confusing so I just didn't it, it, even at 11 12 13 that was weird to me oh, yeah for sure like so even today it's just like you're I, when I, a girl or if I'm talking to a girl and she's like confused or ashamed like mm -hmm. I feel like that means you're just ashamed that you like girls like yeah. if you're ashamed I'm like, I can't talk to you. And that's what I was going to say. Do you ever find yourself like counseling um, young girls who may, may be going through the same thing you was going through? Have you ever had like somebody you might have been like a role model for? Like, hey, this is what I went through. You shouldn't do this. Like, have you been in that situation yet? I have not been in that situation yet, but I have um, actually talked to younger girls before, mm -hmm. like um, just about what they want to do in life and mm -hmm. just like who they want to become and why they should actually go through with it. Even if they are going through hardships, it's not going to stay like that. Like I always try to make sure I make that the main thing I say to young girls when I talk to them, because mm -hmm. I feel like young girls, we got more emotions yeah. and things like that. So we feel things a lot differently and shit just feel harder on yeah, us. For sure, yeah. So I just think like, you know, just making sure we I tell a young girl mm -hmm. that it's not that hard, right? Like it feel like it, but yeah. just push through things to get better. For so sure. but I haven't actually talked to them about mm -hmm. their sexuality and um like how to be like it's okay to be bisexual and yeah. open and there are groups and things like that that mm -hmm. they can go to if they want support and to talk to yeah. other bisexual girls. Yeah. Now, this is the last one this is the last, <laughs> this is the last question I'm gonna ask you about the sex. Okay. Like, this this, mm -hmm. this blew my mind. This is wild. Right. Now do you think you met a dude named Mel? Now, that was the wildest shit ever, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Now, first off, the right, the dude was locked up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You you still 13. That's when you staying with the uh, with the girl K. Yeah. But he 33 years old. Mm -hmm. Even though, and you said you lied about your age. Said you were 16. That was still too damn young. For, for a no, three. I told. I feel like I told him I was 19. Yeah. I told him I was 19 too. My oh. that, that was my go-to age. Okay, number. 19. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Okay, so he, okay, you're 19. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? You made the transition. You kind of over his house a whole lot, whatever, whatever. He's staying with somebody, though, right? Right. He's he just getting out of jail, staying yeah. with someone, yeah. his family. Now, his daughter is actually older than you. Exactly. His daughter actually is 19. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the wild shit, I guess his brother had came in the crib and was like, hey, this girl is 13, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. But, you know, when he came in, he kind of like, you know, confronted you about it. You wind up, you know, letting him know what, what it was and stuff like that. But, you know... If in the book it shows that like you know you came in there and you know you laid in bed and you know he, he still he did what he wanted you know what what he Basically, wanted to do yeah and thirteen and I'm like dog oh, thirteen and thirty three bro like that <laughs> like like talk about that and like what was so interesting about him like you thirteen like what was so interesting about him that made you want to keep on with it and, and when did after a while when did you think like oh this is wrong like or this fucked up like. I never thought it was wrong. Yeah. I never thought it was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and I do feel bad about it because as an adult, I do know it's wrong. Yeah, but for sure. when I was doing it at that age, I never thought it was wrong. I really felt like I liked him a lot. Mm -hmm. And I felt like he liked me a lot. And that's why we kept doing it. Like, I never mm -hmm. made him feel like it was wrong. And I never, even in my head, it never crossed me to make me feel like, it was something I shouldn't yeah. do or try not to do, even though yeah. I knew it was like, I, and honestly, like when I say I knew it was wrong, like I knew we should not talk because he was a grown up. Yeah. I didn't know why we shouldn't talk. Yeah, for sure. Like I didn't know. I just yeah. knew he was a grown up. I didn't know it was because we were so much far apart in age. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the rules of like, you know, 
18 yeah. up. Like, yeah, I just sure. knew you're supposed to say you're 18 and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that. Yeah, yeah. And if you talk to a grown up and you're not 18, <laughs> like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just how I felt. Like, that, I didn't really know, but as an adult, like, I know. So, yeah. um, but no. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm looking at that part like, damn. Like, <laughs> like yeah. that. Now, um, do you, um, of course, you know, you're in, in, uh, you're you're married now and stuff, but do you do you know where these like do you ever? I, of course, I don't think you kept kept in contact with these people, but mm-hmm. do you st- do you still like do you know what they where they are now in, they, in their later years? Um, like I I've seen profiles, you mm-hmm. know, like I've seen profiles, um, and I see they're happy. Some people they're happy. Yeah. Some people names that I had to change that I thought yeah, were yeah, 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 like I thought you know whatever. Um. I have not seen their profiles at all or like where they are in life, Mm -hmm. but like majority of the people, um, I've come across some of them, some of their names I've actually kept the same in the book. Mm -hmm. Um, so some people actually might know some of these people. Y'all might not because it's a lot of the same, like these, the people names are in the book. Like, Kay, that's such a common name. Like y'all not going to know who, which Kay, which Kay in Detroit I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. So do you ever feel like, like, would a conversation ever, you think, would it help you if you had a conversation with these people? Like, man, why, why did you do this? Why didn't you, you know what I'm saying, maybe t- give me help or tell me, hey, get the fuck on, you shouldn't be doing this. Did you ever think, like, damn, I wish I could talk to these people just to ask them that question? Or you just don't care? Nope, I feel like the book I said, I feel like I said so much in a book to mm-hmm. those people. Mm-hmm. And I express where, where I feel like they did wrong and I, you know, stopped talking to them. And... Mm-hmm. I express where I see, like when I went back and I, and I thought about these situations and I wrote them out, I'm like, damn, I did provoke that, Mm -hmm, you know, like I take full accountability for the bullshit that I put people through. Um, so like with that being said, when they, if they ever did read the book or see the book, um, for example, my brother is one of those people that has read the Mm -hmm. book that I feel like. I put him through bullshit probably and he put me through unnecessary yeah, sure. bullshit and when he read it and he was like damn looking at it from her point of view be all, my bad, I apologize. exactly so, yeah. you know what I'm saying because it's not like that I never not one time had bad intentions for any situations that happened in this book yeah. I never not one time was out to get anyone for sure. I was just trying there. to get myself and my son in a better place Yeah, that's it, and like, it can, like I said it can help somebody in the long run who's going through that who might read your book like damn I went through that you know what I'm saying right so no I don't want to like if they wanted to say anything to me they can reach out to me but yeah. this chapter of my life is closed like oh, for sure yeah, yeah you know yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. have no more conversations yeah. with nobody from this book yeah 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 for sure now of course you young you in the streets you're not you're not you don't want to be with your parents and stuff uh, you was you was in. A, when did you you was stripping from thirteen to twenty four? Um, when did that happen? What made you do it? Was that your way I can earn money because I'm out here on my own? Mm-hmm. Like that's what the whole purpose of it, of it was for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Like I. So I mean, I did that and I tried to sell drugs too because I saw that was another easy, fast way to make money. Whatever yeah. was easiest and fastest, where mm-hmm. I did not have to commit to a nine to five. That's what I did. So yeah. it could have been selling another girl's pussy. Like yeah. it was easier than yeah, getting a yeah, job. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's just where my mind was at. I'm like, I can stay in school and I can make more than eight dollars an hour. Yeah. And that is all I want to do. I just yeah. want to make more than eight dollars an hour, yeah. buy my son clothes, get him food, pay my car note, pay my rent. Mm. And that's all I needed. Like I didn't really need a lot. So yeah. I mean, stripping did that for yeah. me. And then when I and then like well, a lot of people when I look at uh strippers i compare them to drug dealers yes yeah, very much gonna, the same either, yeah either you're gonna get into it to get out maybe yeah. what you need or you're gonna get stuck to get out or get, get stuck up. yeah yep. so at what age did you like because at first you went there you say you try you just try to make money but at what at what age did you use this as a tool to escape and get to a better situation with your life i oh or was it after you was done with it like it's a tool to get to a like i feel like the only time Cause it got real rough. Like after I was seventeen, after I got had my son, I did not want to dance at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it was so bad. Like so, I went and I worked at Chipotle for yeah. the whole time I was pregnant. I worked at Chipotle, and mm-hmm. then when my son was about three months old, I was like, "Dog, I need that money." <laughs> <laughs> I looked. I'm like my baby daddy. Like, cause he was a drug dealer. Yeah. I mean, he did his thing yeah, and whatever. Sure. Yeah. And um, like. 
You know, so I'm he like, I'm not if you ain't giving me no pussy, I'm not about to take care of you. Yeah. So I'm like, I Damn, want this yeah. lifestyle. Like I don't want to change. Yeah, so it's hard to go back to you Right. Know what so yeah. I'm like stripping. Yeah. Okay. And then from stripping, I'm like, okay, well, I know I got access to pills and I got access to this. I can I got the connections to make For shit sure. happen. Yeah. So like between stripping and selling pills here and there from like you get the lifestyle that you want without mm. having to have sex with your baby daddy every sure. day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's sure. gonna treat you like shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now what now on the outside, what's the perception that people may look may think about strippers that's not true? Like is it something like everybody in there just, you know, fucking every time digging hairy or like what's the shit that we think about the stripper <sighs> world that's totally not with left field? Every girl is every girl is not the same. That's yeah. the only thing that's not true. But mm. everything else y'all think it is, it really is. Pro is what y'all think think ten times worse. Mm -hmm. I'm not even bullshitting. Yeah, for sure. Think ten times worse. It is bad. Yeah. Like it, it is bad. And if you not a girl like that's already popular, mm -hmm. that's confident. Mm -hmm. And on your shit, 95% mm. of the girls that's in the strip club are coming from broken homes, yeah, for sure. battered baby daddies or daddies, just people just doing awful ass shit to them. And so they in a really low space mentally. Mm -hmm. So they stay there and there's no way of getting them out at mm. all whatsoever. Yeah. Like it's just, it, it, the strip club is so bad if, you, if you're not a confident woman. Yeah, if yeah. you're not strong mentally, you're not going to make it out. For sure. You're just not. Yeah, yeah. Now, all right, let's get some positive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 uh you had dropped out of school. What made you like? You know, I'm about to go back get my GED, make this transition. Like, what 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 was that click? Like, man, I gotta go back and get this shit right. I never was so when I dropped out of school, like I was already driving my mom's car and stuff. So I'm like, yeah. okay, I know I know I need a birth certificate. Yeah. I know I need an ID. Mm -hmm. And a social security card. Like, yeah. I know I need those things to do stuff. So I was like, okay, I can drive. And I know we come with driving. I need to do something after I drive. I need to drive somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure, like, yeah. so maybe I can drive to like an office building. I'm like, okay, well, I want to be a businesswoman. Yeah. Like, that's what I told myself. So I'm like, okay, well, what do you need to do to be a businesswoman? Yeah. You got to get a GED. And sure. I'm like, okay. So to be a businesswoman, I got to get a GED. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that's so when I left my house, when I finally left for good, when I was 15, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to get my GED. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get my driver's license. Mm -hmm. And then that's, yeah. that's, that was my plan. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> so that's how I ended up deciding okay. I was going to get my GED because yeah. I knew I wanted to be some type of businesswoman. Yeah. Now yeah. you do have your degree. You went to Wayne State, right? Yeah, I went to Wayne State. Yeah. Now what you got your degree in? Accounting. Account. Oh yeah, because you you worked in uh, corporate America. Yep, I worked at Raymond James. Yep, yep. For two and a half years. Okay. Now what made you um want to get away from corporate America? Because a lot of times we got that state paycheck. You getting paid good. It was nice. Yeah, I did. I bet. I bet. <laughs> so it was what, nice uh, actually. Real so good. <laughs> at first, like, what was it that made you just like you know saying make that push and like you know I'm 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 done with this because like I said you getting a state check. And then now you you going to business on your own and relying on yourself to make this the same amount of money or whatever. So what was it that, that sent you over the air? It's like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of this shit. I'm not doing it no more. It was just my boss. She was so fucking racist. Like, yeah. it was just so annoying. Like, every day I went to work, it was always a problem. Like, like one day she, like, so, like, when I had my baby, you know, I took three months off and then I went back to work. And, like, she was, like, I went back to work and, like, I remembered how to do everything. Like, I didn't need mm -hmm. help at all. Like, I just did my job. Yeah. I just came back in. Like, I never left. Yeah. So, she had a meeting with me and she was, like, you know, this is your review from when you're coming back. And um, I'm very surprised that you know how to do everything still. Yeah. Like, she was upset about it. Yeah, mad. Yeah. Like, she was <laughs> mad about it. And I was, like, okay. Yeah. And she was just like, you know, giving me my review. So that happened. Then like two weeks later, she comes back again, give me another review. Like, you know, I understand you have your bachelor's degree mm. now. And I just want to let you know that means nothing here. Yeah, yeah, and sure. I was like, Damn. well, what a way to crush yeah, a nigga's yeah, spirit. Yeah, like yeah, I didn't real. work five and a half years for this bachelor's 
bachelor's degree in accounting and you telling me it means like you do understand bitch the reason that your boss <laughs> gave me this job is yeah. because of the bachelor's degree in yeah. accounting for sure, yeah. I was at an accountant student firm event when I got yeah. this job yeah for so sure so it matters yeah <laughs> <laughs> um okay but she was just so after that happened it just shit after shit like she just kept having these little small meetings mm -hmm. and in the last meeting she had with me she was like um you know one of your accounts that you balanced was um two hundred thousand dollars off mm -hmm. and something something she was like but i saw you fixed it but we can't have problems like that yeah. when she did that yeah. i i went outside i was crying like bawling i was yeah. just so fucking pissed yeah. like i was just like dog i can't do this no more yeah like yep. this is the most depressing shit i yeah. had to come and sit in and do Ever. Like I can't like this is awful. Like I would rather I was like I'd rather go back to stripping. Yeah, this is sure. yeah. no like you know, some bullshit. Yeah. Right, like no. So I called my husband, he like calm down, just you know, just go back in there. Just mm -hmm. go back in there and figure it out. I went back in there and then within the next couple months I started my sports nutrition company yeah. and I just that's the only thing I did at my desk. Like yeah. I balanced my accounts yeah, then and then I stuff. worked I built my website. Mm -hmm. I did like five 60 page nutrition for plans for men women diabetes type 1 diabetes type 2 mm -hmm. just like did that shit yeah. put it out started my website mm -hmm. and then like one morning i got up i left my i went to work in my jogging pants and like a sports bra <laughs> yeah, yeah. and i was like i quit yeah, I'm I, out. I put the laptop on the desk and left all my shit and i never went back yeah and yeah. that was april 17th of 2018 yeah congrats, congrats. <laughs> i'm glad you, you got all that shit <laughs> Now you say you into sports nutrition. Yes. Now explain exactly what that is for the people. Like you know, what I'm saying you getting, I look at it like you getting motherfuckers who play basketball and shit, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, because so. like that's why I tell my son, and then I wish I would took this, um, this, um, this into consideration when I was coming up. Everybody just think about sports and stuff, but it's other things that you can do around sports and still fuck exactly. with the sports world. Yep. So what made you want to tap into that? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've always been like a a physical person. Like I've always worked out. I've mm -hmm. always trained. Like once I did that twenty six point two miles, like it wasn't nothing nobody could tell me sure. about food, nutrition, yeah. body. Like I'm like I got this. Yeah, like sure. you know, yeah, like yeah. I'm feeling like a real G. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so like so I just I'm like okay, how I eat is so clean because when I was a kid, when I when I left, I didn't yeah. mention this. Um, I was a vegetarian because my last um my last class i took in high school before i finally ran away mm -hmm. they made me read this book about this girl that caught e coli from eating red meat at a restaurant okay. and she was like on her deathbed mm -hmm. and i'm like okay so if i leave you know to survive i yeah. can't eat meat yeah, for sure. so yeah. i just <laughs> ate vegetables yeah. so that's when like where i it first started for me to yeah. eat healthy like mm -hmm. i was a vegetarian the whole time i was in the streets like i did not eat meat yeah. at all just vegetables veggie pita galore on joy road and green fish <laughs> joy road and evergreen yeah veggie pita galore at that coney island um but so that so i, I always been healthy you mm -hmm. know um and then so the sports nutrition was just mm -hmm. the food part of it like mm -hmm. that i didn't really focus in on like i did my body like yeah, i always yeah. worked out but i never really focused on like my like breaking down the macros yeah, so, like yeah, i sure. always was interested so i just researched it more mm -hmm. i'm like well i mean i was going to go back to school for it but i'm like if i already got this degree mm. i know how to research yeah, yeah i don't need to go back to school for this yeah, shit. So like I i'm know, tired yeah. of this yeah. so i just everything i learned how to research accounting and research problems mm. i put that towards food and nutrition mm. started learning the macros started producing the macros for mm. people and then that's how i started making the food for the people mm. and like teaching them how to make it for themselves yeah. and then that transferred over to um making food for cast tech football teams yeah. oh, and yeah, basketball sure. teams and swim teams yeah. and then getting the contract with them and then just like flourishing from there yeah do you ever come out like do we have have, have you like speaking engagements when you come to the teams to tell them why it's important to eat this way and stuff every like time so that's all i did for cast for like the 20 that's and that's so i quit my job and then that summer yeah. i started talking to cast tech yeah. football team the entire summer about yeah. sports nutrition awareness yeah. and then ever since then i talked to each team mm -hmm. um in the athletic department okay. about sports nutrition awareness why it's important yeah. why you're supposed to eat these type of carbs macros yeah. um and things during pre-workout and pre-game mm -hmm. recovery and why is that so important let me ask you this man because i'm interested now uh -huh. the keto diet Mm -hmm. Is that a fucked up diet? Because a lot of people say that that's bad for your for for your for your health and stuff like that. It's not bad for your health. It's just bad because you're going to 
not stick to it. Yeah. It's so inconsistent. The calorie amount and the carbohydrates. Mm. So macros is important because you're supposed to know what you're supposed to eat for your body type. Yeah. You're not going to be able to eat what I eat. Mm. Like you have to eat more probably than I have to eat just because you're a man yeah, yeah. and your weight and your height. Mm. Same for each, everybody. Like we all have our own macros. So mm. the keto diet is not catered to that individual to yeah. succeed. It's yeah. catered for one individual to be 110 pounds or yeah. 170 pounds and yeah. that's not everybody so for that's sure. why i don't think it's a, a successful diet because yeah. my wife she was uh we was doing it for a little bit until uh <laughs> till covid hit and then yeah. we just said fuck it it's hard but, yeah because like you just eat meat and vegetables that's it nope. and, and don't give me like and and that's advanced like yeah. that's how I eat like yeah. I and I when I say I train like I lift weight like I yeah. be lifting I can lift my husband yeah. like I lift so yeah. w like that's for a person that is like trying to body build and yeah. things like that like the average everyday person that's just want to have a flat stomach mm. and a fat ass yeah. they don't need to eat like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 what they should be eating <laughs> I mean it's okay to have carbohydrates in the morning yeah. it's okay to have carbohydrates in the morning it's a, um if you're a grown woman or yeah. a grown man you can eat a little bit of carbs in the morning but you know throughout the rest of the day make sure you're eating things that's going to fulfill you that yeah. are clean clean that's like a, that's a hard, unprocessed hard. food unprocessed food grab an apple grab an orange yeah. um eat a pb and j like it's just simple shit like yeah, that like yeah. it's not processed yeah. unprocessed food is the food you're supposed to intake in your body so it can digest properly yeah. your blood can flow through your body so you can have the proper energy to go about your days i'm not gonna lie to you i i want to give i want to get in shape like tip top shape but <laughs> it is damn hard like it's because food is like drugs like, it is you become my addicted. husband is weak oh my yeah. god He's man. so unhealthy, y'all, and I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> He's so unhealthy. It's hard, man. Cause then once you start, it's like as soon as you start trying to eat correctly, you see these commercials <laughs> pop up. Everything look good now. Burger King. I mean, eat Burger King, but that sandwich look good as hell. I want to try it just because I, I know eat I can't eat the Impossible Whoppers from Burger King. But all right, tell me, it's like a lot of that stuff that's like a um, plant based or a substitute for the bullshit that you eating. It's like it initially tastes good, but the aftertaste is terrible. Oh, some, okay. Some it's because it's because the people that make it all only use herbs and they mm -hmm. don't use salt and pepper. Yeah, yeah. If you use salt and pepper, yeah. it make everything taste better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that, like just use salt and pepper. And I say this to every because I truly go to restaurants and I order vegetarian food. Y'all don't put salt and pepper on nothing. Yeah. Put no. salt and pepper on y'all dishes, and I promise it's gonna make everything taste better. Yeah. That's why it be so nasty. Because yeah. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always got an aftertaste because it's no salt and pepper. Yeah. So I'll be. <laughs> Like, I be wanting to eat right people, man. I swear I do. One day, I always say I'm going to start on Monday. That's every black man thing. I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to start on Monday. Yeah. That's everybody yeah. thing. I said that this morning. I was supposed to work out this morning. I'm, like, I'm going to start back on Monday. Get now, up at 5 a.m. on Monday and do it right. Yeah. Now, can you, be, um, can you be successful at maybe keeping your body type a certain way but still eat what you want to eat as long as you go work out? Because if, if so, I'm on it. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> like you will have like you will be fitter than you were, but you will have fat on top of your muscles. Okay, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you will be like you will have the energy probably you can do more like oh shit damn I can punch a hole through this wall bigger yeah. than I you know yeah, versus yeah, yeah. versus like run faster or something. Um but it really does matter what you eat because it just sticks to your fat. Mm -hmm. Like all the processed sugars, all the um bad carbs like French fries and burgers, oh, all that stuff. Fries. It do like, like unless they're <laughs> yeah. real potatoes unless you got went to this randazzles oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or the yeah. fruit market got a potato cut it up fry yeah. like home fry that shit like mm -hmm. salt that's bad that's good for you yeah, you can yeah. do french fries like that but yeah. you can't do the mcdonald fries every day yeah, shit. like yeah, that's yeah. that ain't right and man. we said hot ready over here over right here. Dog. Like, <laughs> the hot and ready dog <laughs> man i was hungry i was hungry as hell it's okay i'll be picking pepperonis off eating hot yeah. ready too and i'm now hungry. um now I, I did my brother he he had to work out he work out like a mud named charles and stuff like that okay is it like a certain grease you should fry your food in Olive oil, um, olive oil, omega three, omega three fatty acids are really good mm. oils to use. Okay. Um, just and 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 when you say fry your food, like don't deep fry. Always like try to like saute fry like this much mm -hmm. oil. Like don't always deep fry because you can still get that crisp effect yeah. um, without deep frying everything. Mm. Yeah, now is the air fryer is that good for you? Air fryer is really good. Okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't know it's gonna turn to this. I'm all like, cause yeah. man, it's hard, bro. I got the air fryer, but yeah, it's hard, man. Yeah, like, it's, 
That's one thing. I, 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 I probably got to be on my deathbed like, hey, man, you need to change the way you eat. All right, I got you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, that's every man in America. It's hard. It's hard. That's almost me. every dude in America. I now, with your like. uh, sports nutrition, are you playing? Do you want to work with, like, like like bigger companies, maybe the Pistons? Like, that's like For a dream. For sure. Yeah. That is the goal. That okay. is the goal. So, I had to take a step back from it because of COVID and, like, every yeah, sure. coach, every school, like, no, no, we're not talking. We're not talking right now because mm-hmm. of COVID, because of COVID. So, mm-hmm. um, now that COVID's over, mm-hmm. um, once I'm done writing, you know, because mm-hmm. I got a show coming. I got the actual um, reality show coming up okay. um, that I'm writing on. It's okay. my first, like, screenwriting thing that I'm doing that I'm really excited about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I got a reality show coming up But I'll, after that And mm-hmm. after I'm done writing part two to this Which is yeah. American Wife mm-hmm. um, I'm going to go back to yeah, <laughs> Sports yeah. Nutrition Because okay. it's just so many hats yeah, And it's yeah, so much sure. responsibility And it dedicates I'm... so much time to everything yeah, yeah, yeah. I put so much time behind that Because that is truly my baby mm-hmm. Like Detroit Nature is like I live I, I literally started this company Because I'm such a fucking picky eater Yeah for sure I'm such a picky eater And I just want something healthy And something good That yeah. is not Like you said Got that aftertaste yeah, to it Yeah 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 Well it's true You gonna get that That piss that gonna hit you up <laughs> And you know what I'm saying But don't forget You was on this podcast I'm, I'm, not, some gonna forget. I'm <laughs> not gonna forget I'm not gonna forget Especially you got my boy K Cunningham He just drafted So yeah Yeah So uh, let me ask you this Before we uh, wind down My last question is um, As far as like your husband mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying I was uh, lurking on your Facebook page seeing y'all been together for a long time yeah so uh um how did he feel about you coming out with the book was he upset was he like you should have kept that out like how was he about it no so i did i asked him i was like are you cool with me putting us in there yeah and he was like i mean yeah go ahead yeah he like once he gave me the green light i was like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, how did you guys? How did y'all meet? If you um, mind me asking. So we did meet at Deja Vu. Okay. In that was a question of mine too. Like, yes. how hard is it to talk to a? Stripper. <laughs> it is like it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Um, but because I was so independent, it mm-hmm. was just like. I mean, I just kind of wanted some dick. <laughs> you know, like, I, you. <laughs> I just, like, wanted something clean, yeah. something that wasn't in the streets, like, that mm-hmm. mattered to me. It really did. So mm-hmm. that's kind of how we hit it off because he was the complete opposite of yeah. what I was talking to. He for was sure. an accountant. Yeah. He worked for the city of Detroit. His yeah. mom was an accountant. He come from a stable woman oh, like yeah. it was just so different yeah. like y'all i'm like good, y'all got some nice little money together then like, right, a couple of dollars, right? right 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 so it's like <laughs> damn up. like it, it was i that's how me and him ended up hitting it off because he's like oh you in school for account i can teach yeah, you can, yeah, school, like, yeah. oh yes yeah, well, oh you yeah. go to Wayne state i go to Wayne state okay oh, yeah, for sure. like it just worked out so, so he come in he come in deja vu every day like I want. <laughs> yeah. No, he stopped going once I started calling. Okay, all right. That's he what's stopped up. going. He stopped going. So how, how happy was he when you was like, "I'm done with this, this, uh, the clubs." He yeah. actually. Oh, he, he he one who pushed you like get out that shit. He was like he pushed me to do what he make me happy. That's what he mm-hmm. always said. He's like, "Do what makes you happy," mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Well, this doesn't make me happy, but it makes me money." Yeah. And he's like, "I'm like, so school makes me happy." He's like, "Well, focus on school," mm-hmm. and it's like because I was so conflicted between actually having money in my pocket mm-hmm. every day and not having money and focusing on school. It just, I feel like me and him clash a lot because of that. Because yeah. he like, I'm here to help you with school. Like, I'm here to yeah. make sure you graduate. But you like, I'm, I'm and I'm like, like, and I'm like, I just, how can I? It, school took so much time. Like, I couldn't go make money if I'm mm. studying all day. It just, it yeah. didn't work out. For sure, for sure. So me and him clashed a lot because he like, I know you want to be an accountant, but you want some, you want all bullshit. Yeah. You're not focused, <laughs> yeah. and you just, cause he's born in '82, <laughs> so. Okay. He was focused. He yeah, knew what he sure. wanted. He what he want. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he like, yeah, get your shit together. You're like, come right. on. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. okay, that's what's up. Hey, I'm, I'm happy you had came on the show, for real, because I've too. been having so many rap dudes and females <laughs> on here. It feel good to talk to somebody different. And I had to actually sit down, like, really write questions. And like, all right, I'm going to ask for this, that. <laughs> I don't want to ask too much. I don't want to ask, you know what I'm saying? So it was dope. That was dope. Yes. But we always end off, I give you a category. You give me your top three. Okay. So give me your top three childhood crushes. Top three childhood crush. Childhood, childhood. Who you like? Who who you was crushing on as a child? Silk the Shocker. Oh, shit, that's the first. That's what's up, though. Uh, that's a super first. 
Um, Usher. Okay. Genuine. Genuine, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that, Pony? Right, Genuine. I told you, I tell the story all the time. Well, What's yours? I want to know. My top three childhood crushes? Yeah. Uh, Topanga off of Boy Meets World. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jada Picky and Neil Long. Okay. Yeah, I'm quick, boy. I know okay. that girl. I love those girls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Genuine, when I, um, this girl I was talking to named Eric Alliance, we was at Gross Point North and, um, when she finally became my girlfriend for the week, we was a girlfriend boyfriend. <laughs> I played that song, My Whole Life Has Changed. And I put the <laughs> I put the phone to the speaker though. <laughs> That's your fault. Every time I think of Jane while I think about that song. Duh. Okay. I was yeah. happy as hell about you, Erica. You did me dirty. Did him dirty, Erica. I was 14. I was trying to talk to her the whole school year. <laughs> and she finally said yes, and I played that. My whole life has changed. Aw, <laughs> that's so cute. All right, give me your top three uh foods. <laughs> oh scallops. Okay. Um, I love. I mean, I really like plant based food. Mm -hmm. Like, I love a good plant based restaurant. So, any plant based mm -hmm. restaurant that's yummy, mm -hmm. usually in Chicago. Okay. Um, <laughs> my last one that's really Pacific, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes and yeah. greens. I'm sorry. Greens. Oh yeah, collard greens, mustard. Like, it don't matter. Mm, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me your top three moments in life. tough one mm. <laughs> make you think a little bit i know because <laughs> you don't want to say it wrong <laughs> so like, hold on i was in that moment <laughs> well obviously giving birth to my kids and, and, and i'm glad you said that because every time i ask that question niggas don't say nothing about their kids i'll yes. be knowing they got kids like dog <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> yes giving birth to my kids um Leaving the strip club. Okay, good moment. Um, oh, this is the last one. It's gonna be hard. Mm hmm. So your kids you left that left the strip. Cause the way I felt when I finished my marathon and yeah. the way I felt when I graduated was very similar feelings. Okay. So. I'm gonna say that marathon. That shit was, whew. Yeah. That was so hard. I'm gonna have to say the marathon. That was, that was it. I was just gonna say his other one, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, husband Look. marriage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's up, dog? No, he, you know that's a given. Yeah, I'm gonna say you put, you put that. That's with the kids. That's with the kids. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was included. I thought that was a package deal. I thought that was a package deal. You no, know, I want to see. It's like, hold on, cuz like. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Give me your top three T V shows. Um, Fresh Prince. Good person. Um Obviously Martin. Oh, you real good then. And uh I'm going to have to say a more recent one. I'm gonna have to give it to uh How to Get Away with Murder. Okay, okay. You when you was growing up, did you have like the Wayne Brothers? Of course. This this hating dude say Wayne Brothers is trash. Oh, why you hating on them? Man, you crazy. Boy. Marla was the, was the man. They just uppity, man. They just some uppity niggas. <laughs> All right, give me your top three uh, movies. My top three movies? I'm bad at that. Ooh. Oh, just some junk you just like to watch or whatever. Um, maybe. My category. I can say a cat top three categories. All right, go ahead. Give me a damn. I can give you my top three categories. is Thriller. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my wife always trying to watch some scary movies. I'd be like, come on. Thriller. I love Thriller. Um... Funny. I always go to comedy. Oh, yeah, got That's to. like my go to. Especially, like, I love white comedy. Oh, my I'm God. Lie to you, like, I love Larry David. He's man, so funny to me. I, I, I like, like his man, humor. Uh, uh, Steve Carell off of okay. a four year old version. Okay. Oh, man. of course. He's hilarious. Yeah, he, 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 he's hilarious. He, yeah. he is. Um, and then. Uh, Some good drama. I like scary, though. I like a good scary man. movie. Even yeah. though I'll be like, I'll be scared, but I like man. a good scary movie. See, my wife, she can't watch scary movies and then I, I got to be in the house. For sure, yeah, same. Oh, you weak. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm. I'm. Well, yeah, I need my husband or somebody. My son, my son, like that scary yeah. ass shit. So I'll, he be cracking up at me like, ma. Yeah. How? How? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. How are you supposed to be a gangster? Heck yeah. And you scared of scary movies? <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, last one. Give me your top, top three drinks. Okay, I love me a good cognac. Mm -hmm. 
a good cognac. So I'm always my go-to cognac, 1738. Is that what you meant, alcohol? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. She's like, oh, I like Faygo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cognac, tequila. I love mascal tequila. I just got put up on it. Smoky tequila is so okay. good. A okay. mascal tequila. That's really yummy. So. I can't drink tequila. Yeah, but I fuck with tequila. I'll only um, Anejo, though. Only Anejo or Mascal right now, because okay. I like that. And then, um, I really like a good rum. Yeah. I love a good rum, yeah. but I haven't really had one. You found something as a go-to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I ain't got addicted to the whiskey and bourbon because of him. Okay. So, yeah, we've been... I know night, somebody that likes whiskey. Yeah, I was drinking Maker's Mark last night. Maker's Mark, yeah. Yes. That was a little bug. I Ooh, wish we, whiskey be having me. Yeah, tequila, see, that, that gets to me. Blackout. Yeah, it gets to my legs first. Ooh. For some reason, like, I know I'm drunk. My legs start feeling like noodles. Like, damn. Damn. It got me. I'm gone. Damn. <laughs> it's a wrap. Speaking of, how moment or drum moment? Give us a story when you was one or both. <laughs> oh gosh, um, the one St. Patrick's Day in Chicago, mm -hmm. where I don't know why the hell me and my friend just woke mm -hmm. up and started drinking, and we filled our water bottles up like this yeah. with tequila. Okay. Each each of us had our own bottle, yeah. and we just went out on empty stomachs Damn. and just kept drinking Already and. Dead. Well, next thing I know, I was in the hotel room bathroom floor, yeah. like with my leg up on the tub, like I can't move, God. throwing up in somebody's bathroom. And then like, next thing I remember, <laughs> I was trying to get on the elevator. Yeah. And then next thing I remember, I woke up in my hotel room and then my friend took video of everything. Yeah. So, so I got to so see you got myself. To see, well, yeah, cause you, so you, you oh, remember God. nothing between just no drinking. I'm on my ass in the bathtub. Let me in the bathroom. I'm trying to get on the elevator and man, then man. waking up. See, now the bathroom is always a good place just to lay down. Oh, yeah. Because you got that floor cold. Is, yeah, it's cold. The floor is you cold. You feel like you ain't recovered. <laughs> like, oh, God damn it. I'm so happy I got you next to me. Yeah, <laughs> the floor is the best. Because it, it was times I was throwing up so much. I'm like, you know, I'm just about to. I'm, my, I'm here. You I'm here for the to. night. This you is my bedroom. To. You have to. I'm here. I'm going to sleep next to this porcelain guy. <laughs> and I'm good. Yeah, I'm all smooth. But no, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. It was, it was a great conversation and stuff. Yes, it was. It was fun. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. Best podcast in the world. Uh, <laughs> Make sure y'all follow him, y'all. Yeah, shout out to everybody underscore podcast, man. But um, get the people the uh, way they can find you on social media, the way they can get the book, all that good stuff. So you can find the book on www.corporatestripper.com and on social media, corporatestripper.com. Oops, my bad. Just corporate stripper. <laughs> yeah. But if you type my hashtag in on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, LinkedIn, corporate stripper, Yuri Baby, Y U R I E Baby, mm -hmm. I will definitely pop up and you will see all my funny videos and content. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, she ain't got took it down, so she all good. Yeah, it's not yet. <laughs> yeah. Now, you were talking about movies. Are, uh, eventually, you going to turn this to a movie or you want to do yes. other movies? Yes. So, um, I definitely want to turn this into either a TV show or a movie. Movie, just mm. because like the type of feedback I've gotten from it so many people mm. are like I want this to be a movie because yeah. it's just the type of situations that happen I can definitely see it being uh, like a movie or something yeah. like that so yeah. I am excited to one day eventually do that like um so I'm after I'm done writing a series which mm. is American Wife um was the part two to this book and then American Wife part three Three, mm. which will be the complete series. I want to yeah. eventually turn it into like something. Okay, okay. Now I had Thomas Harris on here from uh he he uh in McGraw Ave. Mm -hmm. He playing a lot of Detroit movies. I had a lot of people on this, uh, you know, that dabble into the movies. And I'm gonna tell you like I told them, if it's ever a role that you need, thug number three. Thug number three. Call okay, me. I I'll got you. In, I'll come in. I'll be the best thug you can be. Yes, <laughs> I got you. Yes, I'm gonna keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do it until I get that role. Yes. I, okay. Then, you know, what I'm saying I just wanna be a thug number three. That's all. I'll be, you know, thug at the bus stop, all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> whoever, whoever thug is, I was gonna be that person. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So uh, you wanna leave people with some kind of words like, you know, don't drink and drive. You know. Definitely just... don't drink and drive for sure. <laughs> um, but yes, y'all, just stay positive. If y'all ever feeling down or feeling like the world is against y'all just remember like nobody's going to fuck with you harder than yourself no mm -hmm. one's going to believe in you more than you do so mm -hmm. definitely avoid negativity avoid people that are in a low space in their life and just push yeah. forward stay focused for sure, for sure. and mine's gonna be just hey man talk to your kids man like keep the conversation open 
Don't 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 send them to your room every five seconds and shit, man. And don't let what you got going on interfere with interfere with you being a parent. Like do what you gotta do. Uh, don't send uh, don't don't tell them to go give them their phone, play a game every five seconds. Shit, have a conversation with them. Exactly. Try to have some type of conversation with them every day, whatever, and see what the fuck going on with their life because shit, you never know. Exactly. Shit, you never know. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, it was a pleasure having you on the show. You know what I'm saying? Thank I can't you. wait to see your book and your TV shows and your movies, all that shit blow up. Thank you. You know, and I get that thug roll in there. It's going to really <laughs> blow up. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, whenever you got anything else going on, hey, you you welcome to come back. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, until next Thank time. Thank you for having me. Till next time. Yeah, holla at y'all. Shout out to everybody. Good job.